welcome to Miss Gerald's Doodle Notes. Today's looks a little bit different because they're already completed for us, but don't worry, I'm still going to walk you through it, okay? So, cellular respiration is the process that is going to take food and turn it into usable energy. So, we have our equation right up here at the top, very similar to photosynthesis except the opposite opposite is happening. We have glucose and oxygen entering into the mitochondria and it's going to produce carbon dioxide and water. So if you think about plants, after plants make their own food, they have to turn it into energy. So they go through this respiration process a little bit differently. But when we eat, we go through the respiration process and we breathe in oxygen from plants. Our glucose or the food that we eat ultimately is from plants because ultimately everything is made, um, food is harnessed and made by producers. And then we're going to produce carbon dioxide and water as byproducts. So there are three main stages or three main parts of respiration. The first part is called glycolysis. Glycolysis takes the glucose and splits it. This happens in the cytoplasm and it's an anaerobic process which means it can happen without oxygen. Respiration itself though is aerobic which means it requires oxygen. If there were no oxygen present, then it would go through another process called fermentation, but that's different. So glycolysis takes two ATP to get started. So you start off in debt to ATP. It makes four, but since we owe two to get started, we're really only yielding two ATP at this stage. So it takes glycolysis, which is a six carbon sugar, and splits it into two pyruvate molecules, or two three-carbon sugars. Two three-carbon molecules. Pyruvate then enters into phase two, called the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle happens in the matrix of the mitochondria, which is like all of this, this space in here. The Krebs cycle is going to take the pyruvate and turn it into carbon dioxide and it's going to yield two ATP. ATP is going to be stored in our energy storage molecules and then used later in the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain takes in oxygen. It happens on the cristae, which are the inner folds of the mitochondria and it produces water along with about 34 ATP. So oxygen is our final electron acceptor here. It goes into the electron transport chain, pumps a whole bunch of electrons, creates water as a byproduct, and yields the most of the three parts of respiration. The total ATP that we get varies depending on how efficient the cycle is. Typically, you can get about 38 ATP from one cellular respiration run. So we have three parts, glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, yielding 2, 2, and 34 ATP for a grand total of about 38 ATP. Again, this number can fluctuate. That's all for today. See y'all later.